Hey Fabricators and welcome back to another episode of Advancing Fabric brought to you by Advancing Analytics, your data and AI specialists. And this month we've got a very special edition for you. Um, we've got our Fabcon Europe special. So I am just back from the European Microsoft Fabric Conference in Stockholm where I had a front row, not quite center seat to some of the big announcements coming out of the conference. There have been tons of news landing over the conference and in the lead up to. Uh, so I've picked out my top 10 to share with you today. So let's get stuck into it. Number one, service principle support for Fabric APIs. So this might feel like a small one, but it is a huge one for automation. We can now automate API calls in Fabric securely. And there was a huge cheer when this was announced to the MVP community. This is going to apply to your workspace management APIs, your capacity APIs, one lake security and shortcut APIs. I'll come on to that. And any CRUD APIs as well. So that should create, read, update and delete across multiple items. To get a full list, check out the documentation though. Um, and the link will be in the comments. Number two on the list is the Fabric Terraform provider. This is still in public preview. Uh, but there is now an official Terraform provider for Microsoft Fabric. So if you're not familiar with Terraform, it's an infrastructure as code tool for deploying and managing resources, not just in Azure too. The investment here, instead of purely in Microsoft's alternative bicep, is a step in the right direction uh, to lean into tools that many organizations are already using. So I am super happy to see that one. Number three on the list is tagging. So again, this is in public preview and this is another tool on top of your workspaces and your kind of domain wrappers that lets you discover and identify fabric items such as lake houses and reports, etc. You can start to tag them with project names. You can tag them uh, with domains and things like that. And it allows you to kind of track everything and discover things a lot easier within your workspaces. I'm really interested to try this one out and see if there's any integration with Purview for these tags to have a more seamless governance approach. So if that's something that you are very interested in and you've started to play about with, drop us a comment and let me know how you're getting on. The next one is full Git integration by the end of the year. So there was a few additional pieces announced uh, there as part of the announcement. Uh, centering around real-time intelligence experience. Um, but I am super excited with this one, but kind of wished it was already there. It's hard enough driving adoption of good source control practices. Um, so now that that's announced, Microsoft have committed to it. The rest will be there by the end of the year. That's yeah, this year, right? The next one is the native execution engine. And this is off the back of the Fabric Runtime 1.3 announcement that that is now generally available. So that new Fabric Runtime brings with it Spark 3.5 and Delta 3.2. So it's also bringing that native execution engine into public preview. This is Microsoft's Spark engine written entirely in C++ and it's a great option for more complex transformations and intensive queries, not so much for the kind of standard IO that you're, uh, that you're looking with kind of less complex uh, notebooks that you might have. So it's a bit like Databricks Photon Engine. I haven't put the two of them side by side, so that will be interesting to see, an interesting comparison. But what's really good here is there's no extra cost for this one uh, and no code changes are needed um, in your code when you're using it. If you activate that from that acceleration screen that you can see there, that just works in the background and it will use it where appropriate. So that is a really, really interesting one. I'm really interested to see how the performance stacks up uh, against Photon, but also the performance improvements that they're seeing um, against the normal Spark Engine and Fabric. A nice little addition here is uh, to the data warehousing experience is the T-SQL notebooks in Fabric. So I miss playing about with these in Azure Data Studio. So you can now create T-SQL notebooks uh, in Fabric, which is really good. Definitely check that one out. And I buried the big one a little bit. 
uh, Databricks Unity Catalog Tables in Fabric. This is one I have been waiting to talk about. So we start to get that kind of story. Satya talked about it, where we're bringing Databricks and Fabric together. We've got the whole Better Together story. And myself and Johnny have talked about this at conferences where you have multiple different kind of variations on your uh, hybrid architectures with Databricks and Fabric. And there's multiple different ways to do that. So starting to see some real kind of cross integration here is brilliant to see. So you can now bring your Unity catalog tables into Fabric. How it works is essentially shortcuts your tables, it essentially shortcuts your tables into Fabric. So there's no actual movement of data happening here, despite that mirrored name, which makes my eye twitch a little bit. It also supports managed and unmanaged tables uh, within Unity catalog. There are some types that aren't supported, like Delta sharing tables. Um, and I talk about some of this thing in my session uh, that I delivered at, at the Fabcon uh, Europe conference, that that's just creating that shortcut inception. You can't create shortcuts on top of shortcuts. Uh, so definitely check that out, check out the limitations as well. Um, I'll definitely be exploring this one in more depth with at least a, short, a YouTube short coming out on this soon. Number eight on the list, um, in no particular order, I might add, is dedicated copy job item in Fabric. So this one seems a little bit superfluous, but the premise behind it is that all of those billions of data factory pipelines that we've all created, you know you've created one too, with a single copy job in it and nothing else. Someone at Microsoft clearly got sick of seeing all of this uh, and built a nice new standalone fabric item that lets, lets you just copy from A to B without having to create a, a pipeline and then create the item in, inside it as well. You've also got incremental copy in there too, which is really nice. So that def definitely looks like one that I want to explore in more detail. Number nine on the list, and this is one that dropped a little bit early just before the conference and has been a long, long time ask. I'm sure if Johnny were here today, he'd gush about this for about a solid 10 minutes. So I'm not going to do it justice. Uh, it's dark mode in Power BI, but it's not just dark mode. It's dark mode with the ability to customize the appearance. You've got light, dark, you've got the kind of legacy, the current kind of um, set up within Power BI, but also mirror your system defaults. So no more seer die balls when you're creating pie charts at 1 a.m. I can... This last one on the list, number 10, is high concurrency mode for notebooks and pipelines. And this is one that's probably easy to overlook. This is a big one in my opinion. Building metadata-driven pipelines and frameworks, you are essentially executing notebooks several times with the metadata of different tables being passed through. So the fact that we can use the same session and we're not swallowing up multiple sessions and doing this in a pipeline is great news, it's brilliant to see. So that's my top 10. Uh, and the last announcement that came through as well is that Fabcon 2025 will be in Vienna on the 15th to the 18th of September. So mark your calendars, we will definitely be there. Um, and there was so many other announcements too. We've got Azure Data Factory Fabric item. So being able to bring your Azure Data Factory items into Fabric and see them in there starts to kind of fill that gap where we've maybe still been using Azure Data Factory or you have a huge estate in there. We've got Fabric Data Pipeline support as well. Uh, for on-premises data gateways, and that's going GA, which is great. We've got a new Fabric SKU calculator, which is coming as well, um, and that's currently in private preview. We saw quite a lot around mirroring. Uh, we've got that in Snowflake, which is now generally available as well. Um, REST APIs for one lake shortcuts are now generally available. I mentioned that earlier on with that REST API piece around service principles. And we've got more practice more managed private endpoints uh, for event stream this time. And there is so many more announcements. So definitely check out the documentation, have a look below, we'll pop a link in there for you. And if you're new here, this is the first uh, Fabric News, the advancing Fabric News that you've seen, then don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.